Hey guys, welcome to episode 17 of Pineapple Knits. I'm Marina, and you can visit me on Instagram and Ravelry at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit my hand-dyed yarn company at pineappleyarn.com. Welcome to the podcast this week. I'm so happy to be back with you guys this week. Um, this is a podcast mostly about knitting and yarn and spinning, which I am wholeheartedly a part of nowadays. Um, but I'm so happy to be chatting with you today. And I have a lot to talk about. Even though I am here mostly every week, I feel like there's just so much to talk about and so much I want to share with you. So um, yeah, there's a lot going on in the shop. Um, the advent calendar listing is in its last days. We have just a couple days left until the advent calendar for 2018 is going to be closed and no longer because I need to start dyeing some yarn for it. For it. <laughs> so um, we've got that. We have the new Stephen West mystery knit along, which of course I'm so excited about. I'm sure you guys are too. It is going to be so great. I wait for this time every year, so excited. So I actually have some kits all ready for it and I cannot wait to share those with you because I have a new base to go in them. So much texture, so much color, it's going to be great. So let's get started with what I have been knitting lately. My main project I've been working on this week is the Hipster Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. And it's coming along. It's really, really pretty so far. I am loving the color, loving the pattern, loving the yarn. So last week when I showed you, I don't think I was up to the first, whoops, the first uh, row of, um, I don't know, what would you call them? X's eyelets. They're kind of like giant eyelets. I don't know. But here, here's a close-up of them. So you know what I'm talking about. They're kind of like X's. I want to get really close and show you how awesome this is though. So I've done two of these really, really great. Um, I don't know what they're called. X's? X rows? I don't know. <laughs> but um, in between here, I don't know if you can see this really interesting pattern knitted into the fabric here, but I think it is so fun. And um, it's not something that really pops out and you would see it normally, but it just adds another element to the shawl, which is really neat. Um, yeah, this is a worsted weight yarn, so it's really knitting up quickly. Um, even though, you know, I always think that that worsted weight yarn is going to knit up so quickly and, oh, I'm going to, you know, fly through this, which you do with, with that thickness of yarn, but it's, for me anyway, I don't know about you if this is how it is with you. When I knit with thicker yarn, like worsted weight yarn, it's not as fast as fingering weight yarn. It's just not. Um, so the actual knitting speed, I should say. I feel like with fingering weight yarn, it just, I can go actually knit so much faster, but that's okay. Um, I am making progress. I'm trying to work on this a little bit every day. And you know what's so funny is I've been thinking of my, for me personally, the colors I'm going to use with the Texture Time Mystery Knit Along. And, um, I've been thinking, you know, I don't have a blue shawl or a green shawl, you know, something that I could wear like with these colors. Totally forgot about this. <laughs> so I need to make this and wear it because I need a blue shawl. Um, so let's see, what else do I need to say about it? Oh, the yarn. This is my yarn, pineapple yarn, in a colorway that has been on my mind for quite a while. I um, I wanted a color that was similar to this, but m had more pink undertones. This is incredibly vibrant and um, yeah, it's almost, almost nearing purple. I mean, if you put a pink or a purple with this color, 
it is so complimentary versus, you know, something a little warmer like a gold or, well, gold would look good too, but like a green. This looks so pretty with purple and pink. So uh, anyway, I don't have a name for it yet. I don't have one. Um, I have no idea. So I hope to have some in my shop eventually. Um, yeah. So that's my, my new colorway. Maybe I'll just call it unnamed. I don't know. <laughs> but I only have this left of the first skein. Um, I actually have three caked up for it. So we will see how much it takes. I have not had a lot of knitting time this week. Um, unfortunately, my kids have just started school again. I am super busy with uh, their activities. And um, when you're juggling multiple kids and activities and their schedules, I'm just trying to find a way to do it all. Um, and not do it all, but just fit it all in. So unfortunately, the knitting has had to take a bit of a back seat for the last, mm, this is the second week. I think it's all gonna level out soon, hopefully, but um, I wanted to show you one of my works in progress that I've been showing you. This is my um, Marled Zippity Raglan sweater. And the reason I wanted to show you this um, is because I actually dyed up this yarn this week. It will be in the shop update on Friday. So I have made no further progress in this, just keeping it real. But um, the yarn itself is actually held double with, um, with a semi-solid and then also a um, variegated. So let me show you those yarns. So this is Saturn. I know it's getting blown out a little. It's kind of a uh, pale um, neon yellow and that's so pretty. And then this is Leaving the City. And um, this, I'll have this in my shop on Friday. It's so pretty. They're really, really pretty together. And this is a sweater for my, uh, my five-year-old. So she is going to love it, I'm sure. Um, the reason I haven't really worked on it that much is because I'm at, at a bit of a standstill. I am not, I, I was going to um, do the hem held double like the rest of the sweater but in one solid color so i was thinking of doing it in like a bright mint color but i am thinking of doing it with just one strand of like a dk weight yarn and honestly i need to go through my stash i need to see the yarns i already have caked up um I think I have a green, some color of green that will work. So just need to get in and dig it out and do the hem. So this has been fun though, and I know she'll love it when it is finished. So like I said, I ha have not had a lot of knitting time this week, but you know, in hindsight, maybe that's because I have been working so much on my spinning wheel. <laughs> it has been calling my name lately and I've had so much fun with it. I am so happy that I made the investment to purchase it and um, I don't know, I don't know if I've expressed this to you, but I don't know if you've ever taken up a, um, a craft or some kind of work where it is just kind of second nature to you. you you know how to do it, even though you don't really know how to do it. You haven't done it before. That's how spinning feels to me. I, I feel I've never really spun before. I had a drop spindle. I didn't use it a lot. Um, but this felt effortless and it's so relaxing and I've just been having so much fun with it. So I wanted to show you the latest yarns I've made and I can't remember I didn't look to see if I've shown this to you guys yet this is I may have shown this last week but this is um one of the hand spun I was going for a fingering weight or a sport weight yarn I think this is really pretty 
think colors on this are just gorgeous. And um, we actually blended, my kids and I uh, blended on our blending board um, a bunch of different fibers, made Rolags, and then I spun them up. So it was really fun. This is, I want to say this is about 50 grams. I was going to, and I will, um, weigh it, and I know it's about 170 yards. So um, because it is a thinner weight, I'll be able to make something out of this, even if it's a little pair of mittens or something. These are, this has yak and silk in it, so that would be an extremely special pair of yarns for a child. <laughs> But um, that's okay. I might pair it with something else if I have. Um, I think it, it would actually be really, really pretty with a gray or a pink or a blue. I mean, there's a lot of colors in here that would work. So um, this was, I was super proud of this. It's not perfect, but um, I feel like I did a really good job. So then on Sunday, we were, um, it was just a really gray day. It was very rainy. Um, and a lot of our sports, actually all of our sports were canceled. So, um, we stayed home and watched some football, like I'm sure a lot of you do. And I spun the whole time, that whole afternoon we watched football. So I actually spun, um, this was four ounces and this is a, I believe a merino nylon, a, a superwash merino nylon. So I was going for a little bit thicker weight on this. It's definitely not perfect. As a matter of fact, I think I probably did a better job with the last skein um, as far as uniformity. But I mean, some of those games were pretty intense. So I was watching TV and spinning at the same time. But this is super squishy and soft. Love it. Um, I do have to say that, well, first let me tell you how I did this. I actually just had a, a braid of um, superwash merino nylon. I dyed this myself just with some leftover dye from, a, um, from one of my dye sessions. And what I did is I just split the braid in half, spun off one half of the braid, and then the other half I just pulled apart and made Rolags by color. So all of the pink section, I made Rolags. Um, all of the gold sections, I made Rolags, etc. So spun all those up and then applied it together. So I was kind of going, I thought maybe it would do a bit of a, I don't know, gradient, stripey. I have no idea what it's gonna look like until I knit it up. But um, I don't know if, I will do that again purposefully, only because with a Rolag, it's more of like a woolen spun, um, you know, where the fibers are basically perpendicular to how you're drafting them, um, and they're just a little softer and fuzzier um, and plumper, and then spinning from a braid, I was spinning basically worsted style. So all of the fibers are parallel to each other and going straight into the, um, I guess, drafting straight into the wheel. So you can really see, I'm just going to show you a close up. You can really see some of these um, plies. They're not, they're not even obviously, but some of them are just smoother than others and um your or I should say one ply is smooth and one ply is just a little bit um I don't know fluffy <laughs> so it definitely has a great texture and I don't want to blame it all on the fiber prep because I am not an expert spinner by any means I'm very 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 much a beginner so um Anyway, I worked on those. I'm really excited to knit these up. These need to be knit up soon though. All of my beginning skeins that I have spun because I know I'm gonna look back and see their imperfections and maybe not want to knit with them so much. So I need to get those knit up and gone so I can focus on 
the skeins that are more and more uniform, which is what I'm working towards. But on that note, um, I don't know if you have heard of Spinzilla, which is, um, I'm, I'm not an expert. I just heard about it and I was excited. And so I joined it. <laughs> it's, um, Spinzilla is a, I guess, kind of a spinning competition of sorts. It is put on by uh, TNNA, which is the Needle, let me think, the National Needle Arts Association. I think that's the um, the abbreviation, <laughs> but I'll put more info down below. But basically, it's just to challenge yourself um, to knit and see how, see how much you can knit up. Um, there are teams, or you can just uh, sign up to be kind of on a solo team for yourself. Um, I actually received an email from Paradise Fibers and they said they were going to have a team. So I signed up to be on their team. Yay! <laughs> so if you're interested in challenging yourself to spin every day and to see how much you can spin, um, check it out. I think it's kind of a, kind of a neat, neat uh, competition of sorts. So I don't always show all of my acquisitions on the podcast. Um, honestly, a lot of times I forget <laughs> and I've stashed them away and um, yeah, or I've already knit with them, something like that. But I do have a couple of fiber um, acquisitions that I want to share with you because I think they're gorgeous, really, really gorgeous. Um, so the first one is by created by LCB and I'm going to go ahead and show you how it's packaged up. This is called pool party, which I was so excited about. It's so, so pretty. And this had been on, it was, it caught my eye a while back and, um, then I just had to go ahead and get it. Um, it is, I'm reading the card, actually, I'll just show you the fiber content. So I was like a little fire star, you know, just, I like the, I like the sparkle, I like the shine, but you can really see, oh my word, that is so beautiful. And that is really showing all the colors so wonderfully. But um, I've never spun with BFL, so that will be fun to, to try, but I think the colors are just so beautiful. And um, you can see all the Firestar, like that is really, really pretty. So yeah, I'm excited to spin this up. And um, I know last week I said on the podcast, don't save, you know, the good fiber or the good yarns, use it up and, um, you know, don't save it until you get better or whatnot. This is going to be really hard not to save, <laughs> or this is going to be hard to save because um, I want to knit, I want to spin this up right away, but um, I will, I won't save it until I'm better, but um, I have other things that I really need to spin up first, and so I'm going to wait on this for a little bit, And um, but I'm really excited to get into this one. The next fiber I have is by Jinx Yarns, and it is the colorway Pom Pom. And it is a really, really beautiful braid. It's a superwash uh, merino nylon, and it is full of interesting colors and shades. I love her dyeing so much, and unfortunately she just announced she's not going to be dying anymore. So um, I was really happy that she still had some fiber in her shop. I was able to get some. I actually have um, some fiber of hers that I am I have on the wheel right now and I'm really enjoying it. So that is beautiful. I cannot wait to spin this. And then the last acquisition I wanna share with you was from a new to me um, company called Spin Jones. And I think if you are in the spinning world, Spin Jones is kind of a mainstay. I don't think that um, this is any new thing, new company to you guys, but um, 
yeah, so I ordered from her and I just want to show you what I got. I was so happy with the packaging. I was so happy with the presentation, which is a big deal to me. But this was um, the first thing that I purchased or that was included in my purchase. This is a little sample here. And I'm gonna show you what is in it. This is called uh, Mermaid. Isn't that pretty? So that was the little sample that was included in the package. And then I purchased two of these, um, she calls them riffraff bats, I guess that are, um, I guess it, they're made with leftover fibers and this is uh, merino wool, uh, mulberry silk and fire star. And you know what, I'm gonna actually take this out part of the way so you can see how vibrant it is. I think that is just stunning. So pretty, so sparkly. I really love this, it's very soft. So I purchased two of these. So I will have enough. These are both 50 grams. So I'll have 100 grams to do something fun with. And then I purchased two um, packages of these, um, I guess she calls them scruffy fluff. They're remnant fibers that can be carded or I was thinking it'd be fun on the blending board to make roll eggs from, but this is the first one. And there is so many little goodies in here. I am so excited to break into this. <laughs> this is 100 grams, plenty for something, a project that's really fun. And then I got this one too. How fun is this? There are so many beautiful fibers in here. So I bought these. I know my kids, um, my kids help me make Rolex because they love using the blending board. So they're gonna have so much fun with these. And um, yeah, so I have a lot of fiber. <laughs> I think I have enough fiber to uh, keep me going for a while. But um, these were really special too because they are from the UK. So that was a really fun package to get and you know, it's it's all something out of the everyday that's that was fun to receive in the mail. Okay, so I think that is all I want to show you as far as things that I've been working on and acquisitions. Um, I do want to show you what I have planned for the shop update. So this shop update will be on Friday, September 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I have so many beautiful things that I'm putting in the shop this week. I had planned on kind of just doing, you know, doing some yarn and whatnot like I normally do, but then I found out that Stephen West is, or when I had found out that Stephen West was releasing his new mystery knit along pattern for this year, I decided that's it. I need to make kits because I know that I'm going to be playing with yarn and playing with colors, so I really wanted to offer kits to you guys, um, and I had so much fun putting these together. I have to tell you, um, the name of his mystery knit along is Texture Time, and so he's really emphasizing um, texture as well as color, of course. You can always knit things in neutrals, no problem there, but I think that this is going to be a really, really fun mystery knit along. I'll definitely be doing it. Um, so the kits will be in the shop. They will include four skeins of uh, fingering weight yarn, and then they will include a very special luxe skein of a new base that I acquired specifically for these kits. And I cannot tell you how excited I am about these. These are a mostly silk base with mohair for the beautiful halo. I hope you can, you guys can see this. And then some nylon for strength. Um, 
This is 100 grams. It is enough yardage for the pattern. And so I will have a skein of this included in every kit as the contrasting color number four. Now I do want to point out that um, Stephen and Penelope, which is Stephen West's um, a shop that he co-owns, he was offering kits from Ching Fiber and in those kits the contrasting color number four was two skeins of 50 grams each. My skeins of yarn are 100 grams each and 382 yards, which is exactly what the pattern calls for. So you will um, have enough yarn with in mine, even though it's contained in one skein. It's basically like a double skein. So I am so excited about these. They are so luminous and squishy and soft. They are perfect for a textured pattern because they are just, they are going to just really make this pattern pop. And um, yeah, so I'm just so excited to offer these to you guys. I will be putting some pictures up uh, right now so you can see all the kits I have offered. Well, I'm not going to show you all the kits I have offered. I will be listing 20 kits in the shop. Most of them are one of a kind, some are two of a kind. Um, they will mostly be on my Lonnie sock base, which is my, you know, basic merino nylon um, fingering weight base. Some of the yarns will include, um, some of them will be on an MCN base, a few will. Um, a few will be on my Nani twist base, which is just a two ply. And I thought that would be really fun just to add a little dimension, add a little texture. Um, but you will have enough yardage for the pattern with these kits. So because they are um, one of a kind, in some cases two of a kind, I would really recommend if you see one that you like, please snatch it up right away because um, I would hate for you to miss it. So these will all be up in the shop um, this Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And yeah, I'm really, really excited. For me personally, I'm not really sure what colors I'm going to go with. Um, I like them all. <laughs> I really do. Um, I actually don't stock things in my shop that I personally don't like. So every kit is, ooh, I really like this combo, or oh, I could, I really would love this. This would go with such and such that I wear, and um, yeah. So I'm so excited for these kits, and um, I hope you guys really like them too. I'm so excited for the pattern, and if you want to purchase the pattern, it's on sale now in Ravelry, at least the the introduction to it and some info about it. So the actual knit along begins, I think the beginning of October. So you have some time. The kits um, in my shop will be for sale for probably um, the next month if there's any left over and I don't know how quickly they'll go. So. If you're interested, um, check out the shop this Friday. I also wanted to mention to you guys too that um, this Saturday will be the last day that my 2018 advent calendars will be for sale. So um, let's see, it'll be September 15th, which is this Saturday is the last day they'll be for sale. It is a super fun advent calendar this year. It is beach themed, of course, and what it will consist of are 24 20 gram minis. And so they will all be individually packaged. Every day you can open one up beginning the 1st of December or whenever you want. I mean, you could open them all up at once if you wanted, but you will receive 24 of those minis. They will all be bright and bold and cheerful. Um, they are going to be so special because they're going to be non-repeatable non -repeatable colorways. I won't be dyeing these up. I won't be writing the recipes down. So it's just going to be so special. Also in the calendar, you will receive a project bag and it is going to be 
so special as well. I actually acquired uh, an old stock, new stock, old stock, I can't remember. It is a vintage new fabric and it is going to be so awesome in a project bag. You're going to love it. So those will be included in it and then there will be some other goodies too. Um, when you go to the listing in my shop, you will see an add-on and you can also add on a full 100 gram um, skein of your choice. Sock yarn, um, merino cashmere nylon, there's a couple of different options and that will be um, also individually wrapped. It will be a non-repeatable colorway. You can open on the 25th of December if you want. So all the details are in my shop at pineappleyarn.com and I will actually put a link to the listing below, but don't wait because once this podcast um, is, uh, I guess, once this podcast goes live, I don't know, um, it will be only a couple days left for the advent calendar. So I wanted to give you guys a heads up and a reminder in case you are interested in that. I will also be adding a few skeins of yarn I dyed up. So I'm going to go ahead and show you those. The first uh, colorway I'll be listing is called Koi. This is one of my first colorways that I dyed. Um, when I began pineapple yarn in, I guess it was 2016. So this is Koi and it has, let me get closer, beautiful kind of a pale gold color with orange and some teal speckles. This, I just really, really love this colorway. It is super pretty and light and cheery. That will be in the shop. I also have um, Endless Summer, which I haven't had for a while, so I'm glad to be listing that. This is just a really bold, punchy colorway of some kind of, I don't know, greeny yellows, pinks, blues. We have some really pretty um, kind of a slate gray color, lots of speckles, so this is Endless Summer. Then this color is the Leaving the City colorway, the one that I am making the marled raglan, uh, zip, zippity raglan from. And it is a mix of lots of speckles, got some neon yellows, aquas, pinks, grays. So this is so, so pretty. And then I have um, a couple of end of the day skeins and um, if you're not familiar, end of the day is when I just take all of my old, not old, but leftover dye I have from dyeing sessions, and instead of throwing them down the drain, I make something really creative and fun. So this is a couple of the end of the day skeins that I have, and this is on my Nani Twist base, which is the two-ply base. And then I have another end of the day, which I think is really pretty. It just has some like warm pinks and yellows uh, along with um, some browns and golds, which I think is fun. So those are the yarns that I'll have in the shop along with the texture time kits. And I will also have the advent calendars. And so, yeah, I hope you guys can join me. That will be this Friday, September 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But I think that's all I have this week for the podcast. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. I'm always so appreciative of you joining me every week and chatting with me. Um, I really enjoy doing the podcast. So thank you guys so, so much for joining me. And I hope you have an awesome day. Bye, guys. Thank you.